As you all should probably know by now, I'm a shill for ASUS crossover boards, and like Ash Ketchum, I'm trying to catch them all. But ASUS crossover boards are kind of expensive, and sometimes you gotta get them in not the best of shape, or not working, or untested. So I went on eBay, and I found myself a Crosshair X370 board, so this is a Crosshair 6, I believe, and it was sold as not working for parts, untested. I think the untested part was really what they were leaning on because it didn't look like anything was specifically wrong with this board from the pictures. It was $69 and some like extra shipped. So I think it was like 80 something shipped, but $69. So I wanted to give you guys the experience of like opening it up, getting a first impression of it and seeing if it works. So this box unopened. Literally got it in today. Super excited to find out if it works or not. Well, super excited to find out it works, not that it doesn't work. I would not be excited about that. <laughs> Packaging. It says, if you have a problem, we can help. But it was sold as not working, so... Why would you help me? I, I, like you, you already said that there's something wrong with it. Okay, so it looks like it doesn't come with the original box. It wasn't like they bought it and it was bad and then they returned it. It looks like it probably came out of somebody's system and they're just selling it as like a used part. What do we have? Well, that's a bubble wrap, good lord. I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. I'm slightly confused, but very impressed. They, they really went through the effort of packaging this thing. Try not to hurt anything cutting this all apart. Well, at least they shipped it in an anti-static bag. All right. All right, so it doesn't have the mounting bracket for a stock cooler. It's very clean, like, doesn't look like there's any real dust on it. it even still has a peel. Here, check this out. <laughs> Let's see if I can't. Camera angles. Man, this peel has been here for a while. It's really hard. <laughs> At least we got a peel out of it, if nothing else. But really, it uh, it looks perfectly good and it's super clean. I mean, give you guys a close up on the 4K camera. I just think these are such a handsome motherboard. Like, ASUS does a really good job of just making it a good motherboard, and then on top of that, it at least looks good. So we're probably gonna be using this motherboard for LN2 overclocking, if it works. So I'm not too worried about how it actually looks because I'm gonna be covering it in Vaseline and then dumping a whole bunch of cold juice on it, so. Let's just find out if it works, and then we can go from there. Go ahead and put a big chunk of cooler on it, because why not? Why not? If we're gonna, we're gonna find out if it works, might as well go through far too much effort to put a cooler that is gigantic on it. But also, I just, I don't feel like putting a, a, a stock cooler on this thing. It feels bad. <laughs> this is a really nice board. 
And it deserves better than like a prism cooler. It's cool because this was the first year of the AM4 socket. It has mounting holes for AM3 coolers. So it was nice of Asus to you know, make holes for both. Like, so if you had a, uh, an old AM3 cooler and you didn't want to get a new cooler, you buy this board, you don't have to buy a new cooler anymore. And I mean, if you were spending, you know, over $80 on your cooler, like say you had like a really nice $180 cooler, $100 or $80 cool. If you had a really nice $80 to $100 cooler, buying this board would be the difference between, you know, having to buy a new cooler or not, it would, it could meet that difference and you'd save money by buying a more expensive part, which is really cool. I wonder why the CMOS battery is removed. It's kind of odd. Why would somebody remove the CMOS battery? Especially from a board that has a, uh, a BIOS reset switch or a CMOS clear switch and a, uh, a BIOS flashback switch. It seems really odd that it's missing the CMOS battery. Unless the company that shipped it to me didn't want to ship it with a battery in it, like, I don't understand. I'm going to put a CMOS battery in it from one of my other motherboards, though. Now, you don't need a CMOS battery for your PC to fire up and work, but every time that you pull power, like you remove power from the device completely, it'll clear the BIOS and uh, it'll forget all your settings. So you don't really want to do that every single time. You don't want to go back in and turn on your X and P every time you turn off the power to the device. Like you just cut the power off because it's in like a, a soft lock condition. <laughs> so having a CMOS battery is nice for that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the CPU that I know 100% should work in this board. Like a Ryzen 7 1700, eight core, 16 thread. This CPU came out the same time this motherboard came out. So there should be no BIOS conflicts with it. Like. It's not like if I tried to put a Zen 3 chip in this board and I'd have to update the BIOS to make it work. This should just work right off the bat. Got some pretty much standard Samsung b -Di. Should work just fine with this. Let's go ahead and pair it with my favorite 290X. The board is lighting up. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera or not. Let me get that in there. God, such a pretty motherboard. God, they give you so many USB ports. Holy crap. Looks like we have a post. Uh oh. Oh, there it is. All right, we have a post. Do we get into the BIOS? Yes, we are in the BIOS. Cool. Sweet. A $69 motherboard. A $69 crosshair motherboard. And we're in the BIOS. That's pretty cool. 3,000 should work, right? Hopefully. Interesting. It only boots into the BIOS screen. Let's see if we can't change. Oh. Hey guys, I'm stupid. Where'd my drive go? It might help if you plug a drive in, you idiot. Well, I could have swore Benchy had a drive in him. Anyway, now it should boot up. I put an actual drive in it. I mean, there it is. A $69 motherboard. I didn't expect this to be so easy. I expected to find something kind of wrong with it and I have to like tinker with it to fix it, but hey, $69, Asus Crosshair 6 Hero, X370, it works. And I, I was amazingly easy. I was expecting a little bit more work to get this thing going, but wow, just take it out of the box and works. So thanks to whoever uh, <laughs> sold me it. I mean, this is a great deal on a board like this board is one of the best overclocking boards. Like you see it at the top of all of the leaderboards. So being able to get it for so cheap is a blessing for the channel. We're gonna be doing some LN2 overclocking on it. So I'm gonna have to strip it down and cover it in a Vaseline, put the pot on it and do a, you know some test pulls, but <laughs> it, it's gonna work great. And uh, if you guys wanna see us do extreme overclocking on this board, get subscribed. We're gonna be doing probably like Friday, Saturday-ish night overclocking streams, or we will 
film it, edit it, and post it later if we don't actually stream because sometimes Zach just gets here super late. At least we have a board for Ryzen now. I mean, obviously you can only do Zen 1, Zen Plus, 1 Plus, and then Zen 2. Hopefully, maybe there's a Zen 3 update for this. I seriously doubt it. Like, I don't think Asus cares that much about us, but it's a good board and it keeps us from having to take apart Zax's PC to get, he has an X470. Like we filmed a video where we put an X470 in his PC, like in the same situation where I got it super cheap because it was four parts not working, whatever. But now we have two crosshair boards and I actually have a third one in my personal rig. And then we have the good old fashioned crosshair four so really, I need a Crosshair 5, a Crosshair 3. I don't even know if they made a 2 and a 1. I don't know. <laughs> but I need to get all of them because having a collection of Crosshair boards would be super cool and I'm kind of kind of getting there. So anyways, uh, if you guys see a board on eBay that looks completely undamaged and it just says untested, hey Matt, it might be a good deal. I mean, obviously it might be a bad deal. Like it might not work, but... I could buy two of these not working ones for the price of a single good one. So I'm going to go out of my way to see if I can't fix whatever it is. Like I do this for a living. I, well, I fix cars for a living, but I fix things for a living. So if I can get something that's super cheap and fix it and have that for, you know, LN2 overclocking where I'm going to be like getting condensation, lubricants, all kinds of awful stuff on this board and I'm not sacrificing a board that's just like perfectly beautiful, like that's a win for me, that's a win for, you know, the ecosystem as a whole. And this keeps this board from getting like thrown away and, or recycled. So if you like this video guys, get, get subscribed, leave a comment on what kind of weird stuff you want to see me buy off of eBay, not working, untested. I mean, obviously this was super easy. Like I literally just plugged it in and it worked, but Everything's a gamble, and I'm a little bit of a gambler. <laughs> like always, guys, have a great day.